And AIMS Global has been one of those um, associations that um, have given so many opportunities to people and work so closely with us institutions. And so I highly recommend them and I know that you will all now be able to have a lot more questions answered by talking to AIMS Global. Thank you very much. Helen, now we're gonna really, because that's exactly, and I just wanted to sort of address these questions. Now I know that EIT offers the most unique courses in the health sector. Um, I know there's postgrad diplomas in health sciences, which are very, very unique, um, probably the one of its kind. There's masters of health sciences that EIT offers. Um, there's masters of nursing and there's bachelors of nursing. There's obviously the CAP course. So there's um, an array of courses. So I want to first look at the health sciences and I want to start with health sciences because we have um, had quite a lot of questions from people lately. In fact, I was just talking to someone this morning who's got, um, who was here and the person may have previously studied, got married, the wife's from India and the wife has done a GNM, which is the diploma in nursing. And they're now looking at sort of getting into either the health sector or the nursing um, you know, sector in New Zealand. So one, for someone who's done not a bachelor's degree, what would be your advice? The second one is that if someone's done a bachelor's from India, so they are a registered nurse from India, they've worked maybe for a few years, they maybe can't get the aisles to get into the cap or there is no space available. What is the suggestion from you for those two portfolios? Okay. Somebody who wants to go into the Bachelor of Nursing, they don't have that um, background. We do have a pathway program for them. It's a six month bridging program. It's involving nursing certificate um, in science. Second question, um, if you have, uh, if you haven't had enough experience, you haven't um, uh, got the um, seven IELTS, you've got a 6.5 IELTS, you can go into the postgraduate of health science and you will automatically get into a CAP program you do not have to go on to a wait list so this is this is once the oh, borders are open okay. obviously all right so it is a more expensive way to get there because obviously you're not just doing the cap but it's a guaranteed way to get into the cap program okay so if i understand so, this correctly, start, correct me if i'm wrong helen because i'm just trying to process this in my immigration brain yes. um if someone is here and they've done a bachelor's of nursing from say overseas they cannot meet the registration requirements. Maybe there's no spaces in the cap. They can't get the aisles. Um, they don't have enough experience. And but they're still looking at pursuing nursing. They can opt for the postgraduate diploma in health science. And I can tell you from an immigration perspective, one, it will give you a three years open work visa post completion. So that's fantastic. It gives you bonus points for your skilled migrant residents. So that's great. But also after doing this course, it gives you a confirmed place into the cap course. So after completion Correct. of this, do a six or seven week CAP course and get to a registration in New Zealand. Am I right? Correct. Uh, uh, correct. And also it gives you two strings to your bow because you've not only got your CAP registration, but you now have that postgraduate in health science. If you happen to change your mind or you want to do both, you've got more options uh, to work That's right. in the health sector that or great. as a nurse. Be and that's also great because I know that a lot of these people may not actually want to get into nursing um, or they may not just be able to get into nursing because they've started working in support um, as support worker roles. And those um, positions, caregivers, healthcare assistants are now considered skill. So that can provide you a fantastic pathway towards residence. And because you've got the three year open work visa, you've got enough time for immigration to process your applications. So am, I, am I correct? So that, correct. That's the PG. Correct. But to get into the postgraduate health science, you do have to have a degree, though. Yes. Okay. So they need to have, yeah, so that's the bachelor's from overseas that they've got. Yes. Um, yes. Talk to me about, Helen, so if we've got someone who's got, um, say, for example, the diploma in nursing from overseas, and they want to study nursing here, is there an option for them to opt for the bachelor's of nursing and apply for cross credits? Um, I would say probably not if they've just done the diploma. Um, there, there could be a chance of maybe two papers. Um, so there'd be two papers less. Um, that would be all I could possibly say. But again, it's case by case. Okay. So that is different yeah. to if it's if coming in with a degree. Yeah. 
So clearly the health science is really a USP. And if you are either yes. looking at getting into the PG or the master's and the master's will allow for the partner to go on a work visa, whereas a PG will allow for the partner to be on a visitors. And I think that's a really good solution for a yes. lot of people that are here that have been nurses overseas. Brilliant. Yes. Okay, that yeah. really sets the, that really explains that to me. Um, now, what I also do need to ask you is, um, you talked about the CAP program. Um, are there spaces in the CAP program that people can get directly into, or does it always have to be the through the PGs or the masters to get into it? The no, when we're in normal times, the CAP is there, but there is a waiting list usually of a year. So now it will be like two years because the ones who were going to come this year will actually go next year, so it will be backlogged. So the only way really for new ones is to try to come through the postgrad um, health science if that's what they want to do. But of course there are other institutions who run the CAP as well, so they need to look around to see what's going to be open for them. But it will be quite difficult, I think, after the COVID to get into yes, that. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. sounds good. Um, in terms of intake, I do know that, Helen, um, AIT offers more intakes than just July and Feb, am I correct? That's, we have eight intakes in a year, eight intakes. So four in Auckland and four in um, Napier, yeah, for health science, business and IT. So would that be Feb, May, July, I'm just making it up, November? Sorry. Is that what happened? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Feb, March, Feb in, in Napier, March in Auckland, May in Napier, June in uh, Auckland, July in Napier, August in Auckland, uh, October, okay. two October ones, yeah. uh, Auckland and Napier, yeah. And so that's really good because a lot of people have got their visas expiring on the 25th of September, which have been extended due to the epidemic notice. And so they've got that, right. you know, either the August intake, if you want to be um, risk averse and apply sooner, or you've got the October intake, um, which can suit you. So those those are the two options for onshore people. Yeah, two two October intakes, earlier one oh. and a later one, earlier one in Napier, a later one in Auckland. So um, it's obviously talking about, so we've got this one which says health sciences programs and what kind of jobs are students getting? And Kritika, if you've missed it, we've just ju uh, run through some of the scenarios where people can opt for health sciences. So you could lead towards a pathway towards became, becoming a registered nurse, if you've got a bachelor's degree overseas um, in nursing um, and you get a confirmed place in CAP, which is fantastic, or you could even pursue getting into disabilities, um, services, support worker, healthcare assistant, personal worker, and those sort of roles. Um, have I missed anything, Helen? With the yeah, health I think I think we're, we're talking about management. You know, if you do the master's in health science, it's definitely a research-based um, applied research in your area. And, and the kind of jobs that, if you're a lab technician, if you've done homeopathy, you've done dentistry, a lot of dentists and doctors who come into this program. These are professionals who, who could have been working in their field for 10 to 12 years. Um, they can come straight from a degree as well. So we've got that whole range. But the outcomes are definitely much more into the management research um, area. Um, the health support, et cetera, is there, but it can go higher than that. And I think um, after this is finished, you should go online to the EIT website and have a look at a video of a student. His name is Shardell. He's working at the Hawke's Bay um, Hospital now, and he does a very good video on his program and what job he's doing now. He's working in the hospital as a health manager there. And I think those of you that are listening, I mean, I've worked with EIT for many um, years, and I think EIT is truly one of those hidden gems that you don't know much about till you actually know about it. Um, and I think EIT is quite unique in terms of the support that the students get um, for employment. And that's that's the main reason why students are looking at studying here. They do want that career. And I think getting that first step in the door is like having your first baby or buying the first house, isn't it? And I think that's what you need the most help with. So. That's something that EIT has been exceptionally well in helping the students with. Um, we do appreciate you coming and talking to us. Oh, it's been a real pleasure, Anima. We've got such a long relationship and um, we've been doing this for so many years and it's just exciting to, it's a hard time at the moment, but it's exciting to see that we are continuing to do this. There are people still interested and we hope that they will still want to come and study and come and study at EIT and benefit all, all the options that are there.
Absolutely. And I think I know for a fact that there's a lot of onshore people that are within New Zealand that are now being sensible with the course choices and the career choices and looking That's at right. aligning themselves with shortages. And